it's good to come to a quiet, secluded place like this. Even though you're not in total seclusion, still you're away from the normal everyday affairs of your daily life. It's a good way of getting some perspective on your life, where you've been coming from, where you're going, away from the usual influences that act on you, so you can get an idea of what do you really want to do. What kind of life makes sense to you? But you probably notice that even though you may be in relative physical seclusion, the mind isn't necessarily in seclusion. It carries a lot of voices, a lot of narratives, huge crowds of ideas, people speaking in your mind, some of which you can identify with as coming from other people, and some of which you tend to identify as your own ideas. And you need some way of stepping back from those as well, because sometimes you've picked up ideas from other people, from who knows where, your family, the media, teachers and friends. And you've ingested them without really thinking about, do you really believe this, what these voices are saying? So you need some way of developing mental seclusion as well. And part of the technique is to do just what we did just now, that chant on the sublime attitudes. You first think about yourself, what you really want. Well, you want to be happy, free from oppression, free from suffering. And then you realize you're not the only one. Everybody wants to be happy, and free from oppression, free from suffering. And that movement from just thinking about yourself to thinking about everybody is an important part of settling down. Because it's so easy to get involved in your own narrative and to forget about the narratives of other people and what you have in common with them. And you also find, as you come to sit here, that you want to get out of unskillful ways of talking to yourself. And how many people complain that when they sit down and meditate and find that it's not going well, start berating themselves, get really upset with themselves, saying, here's proof that I'm still I'm worth nothing, can't do anything. And all the unhealthy commentary that's been carried around in the minds gets applied to the meditation. And so they try to stop and just focus on the breath, but if it's not working, the old commentaries come in again. What you've got to do is learn new commentaries. One, put yourself into perspective. Are you the only person who's had difficulty with meditation? How about all the other people in the world who've tried to meditate? And the fact that you're trying to meditate at least puts you in good company. There are a lot of people out there who've never tried. Those are the really hopeless ones, at least for the time being. You at least are trying. And you can think of all the other people who've tried to meditate in the past. They've had lots of problems, too. Sometimes it's good to read in the, what's called the Verses of the Elders, the Teragata and Teradigata, the elder monks and the elder nuns. Because some of the verses, they talk about the problems they had in meditation, meditating for years without getting any results at all. And then finally things came together, and they understood. So you realize that when you're sitting here having problems getting your mind focused on the breath, you're not the only one. So your situation isn't hopeless. So that's one step, getting a larger perspective. and putting yourself within that larger perspective. 
The second step is to give yourself something good to talk about in the present moment. As long as the mind is going to talk, teach it how to talk well. You can't stop the conversation without turning it into a skillful conversation. This is when the, when the Buddha gives instructions on getting the mind into concentration. Two of the factors of getting the mind to settle down are what he calls directed thought and evaluation, or he called them in Pali, vitaka and vichara. Directed thought is when you focus the mind on a topic, decide that you're going to focus on one thing, and you keep thinking about it. Remind yourself to stay here, stay here, stay here. For instance, you want to stay with the breath. So part of you has to keep reminding yourself, okay, this is where you want to stay. Now part of that conversation may involve reminding you why you want to stay here. In other words, meditation doesn't mean that you totally blot out thought. You learn how to use your thinking for a better purpose. So you remind yourself that if you want to gain any sense of yourself, you have to get the mind to become still, and the breath is a good place to do it. Because the breath is one of the factors of what they call the processes in the body that you can actually exert some control over. You can vary the breath, and through the breath you can create a sense of ease in the body. When the body feels at ease, the mind feels a lot more comfortable in the present moment. When the mind feels comfortable, its thinking is going to be clearer. This is a good place to stay. So when you're keeping the mind here, it's not just a matter of forcing it. Sometimes you have to cajole it. And then you use the evaluation to help you. You evaluate how are things going with the breath. Does it really feel like the kind of breath I would like to be focusing on, like to be feeling right now? If it doesn't, you can change it. You can try longer breathing, shorter breathing, deeper, more shallow. You can think about the breath in different ways. Think about it coming in and out through all the pores of your body, as if your body were one large sponge. And there's nothing to obstruct the breath energy. That's another perception. Remind yourself you're not just necessarily focusing on the air coming in and out of the lungs, but the movement of energy around the body. This can be related to the blood, it can be related to the dynamics of breathing. When you expand the chest, there's pressure put on different parts of the body. Different parts of the body have to be held still so that the other parts can move. And sometimes that stillness becomes a blockage, which you don't want. So can you breathe in another way that doesn't block that particular part of the body? You can survey the body in any way you want. You can start at any spot and move to any other spot. It's good to do it systematically so that if you lose track of where you are, it's easy to remember that you well, you did around the navel, then you came up to the stomach, and then you seem to have lost it, so let's go back to the stomach Then follow through. But you may also find that okay, if you've done the body systematically, that one particular part really interests you. Well, that's fine. Concentration doesn't happen unless you're interested. So where you find yourself naturally drawn. Work on it for a while and see what happens. Now, sometimes it may be that you've chosen a spot that's not going to work very well, but at least you learn. And have that attitude. You're here to learn, and it means sometimes making mistakes and then learning from your mistakes. So mistakes are okay as long as you approach them with the right attitude. This way you learn how to talk to yourself in a way that's more skillful, that helps you actually to settle down. So ask yourself, what kind of breath would you like to feel right now? And then allow it to happen. And then with the next breath, what would you like to feel right now? It might be the same breath again, or you might decide you want something different. That's perfectly fine. Just try to do your best to stay with this one topic of conversation, how the breath energy in the body is going right now. And as you focus on this, you'll find that the mind itself begins to lighten up. The tensions and the worries that it's been carrying around you can put aside for the time being, because you're basically in a different world. You're in the world of the breath and the body. 
It's called a form world, i.e. you're getting back in touch with the, how the form of the body feels. You're learning about which parts can you change, which parts can you not change. Which parts could use some energizing, which parts could use some calming down. You learn to recognize when the breath feels depleted, that you want to give it more breath in. It doesn't necessarily mean breathing more heavily, but just allowing the breath to, as you breathe in, fill the whole body. How do you maintain that sense of fullness? So the breath energy, as John Lee says, is like charging a battery. The breath energy is fully charged. And as you get to know the form of the body in this way, get to re-inhabit in this way, you feel more comfortable in your own skin. And at the same time, you've trained the mind to talk to itself in a more intelligent, more mature way. So concentration is not just a matter of forcing things. It's like that old story of the contest between the sun and the wind cloud. The traveler was traveling on the road with a cloak tightly wrapped around his body. And the wind cloud wanted to place a bet with the sun. He said, which of us is, can get that cloak off that guy? So the wind cloud went first, and it blew and blew and blew. And the colder and stronger the wind got, the more the man clutched the cloak around his body. And the wind couldn't get it off. So then it was the sun's turn. All the sun just did was beam. And as the sun beamed, the man got warmer, and he finally took off his cloak. So learn how to beam with the breath. Beam with your body, beam with your mind in the present moment. Give the mind reason for why it wants to stay here, why it enjoys to stay here. And you find that the concentration becomes a lot more pleasant, a lot more solid, a lot easier to maintain, even as you get up from the meditation seat and walk around, do whatever else needs to be done in the course of the day. You get entertained by the breath. You get intrigued by the breath. You find that by staying with the breath in different situations, when you're dealing with other people, when you're doing work, it keeps you grounded. So you can have this sense of your own inner seclusion inhabiting your own body wherever you go. So even when you have to leave the seclusion of the monastery, you've still got your own space inside that nobody else has to penetrate. So learn how to talk to yourself in a skillful way, because this is one of the essential skills of the meditation. It's one of the essential skills in getting the mind to settle down. There will come a time when you've talked enough, and the mind and the breath seem to become one. When they become one like that, then there's no need to chat. There's a real sense of stillness and solidity because you've made friends with each other. But until you've reached that point, try to talk to yourself in a way that's really healthy and mature. And if you find it getting unhealthy in the mind, just stop, take a couple of good long deep breaths, and start over again. And you find that with time you feel more and more at home here, more and more at home in your own skin, with a chatter in your own mind. And that way everything inside you starts to work together. And when you're working together, you get a lot more done. <laughs>